All right, wonderful. This is, again, we're continuing this speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in 1992. It's the uh, commemorating the beginning of the month of Kislev. Kislev is one of the 12 Jewish months, and in Kislev is most notably the holiday of Hanukkah. Oh, one second. Herschel Shalom. The holiday of Hanukkah is in Kislev. And we just finished last week learning about the speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave, in fact, the last speech that he gave to his representatives, to the Shluchim, in 1992. And afterwards, the Rebbe he had a stroke that paralyzed his mouth. He couldn't speak. <clears throat> so that was his last speech. So this is this, the, the speech we gave right after that, the next week, coming week. It was really two speeches, one after the other. And he's commemorating the beginning of this month of Kislev. Now, the month of Kislev is when Hanukkah comes in Judaism. But the month of Kislev is also the month, the, the 19th day of Kislev, was the day that the first Rebbe of Chabad was released from his 53-day stint in Russian, in, 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 in the Tsarist prison. And it's very interesting what happened over there. He was put into prison, and he, uh, and he was put there by his enemies. One second, I'm going to have to turn this off. One second. One minute, come on. By his enemies, and miraculously, he got out, and... Does this little thing work for me? One second. I want, oh, 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 there we go. Here we go. Very good. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, what's going on over here? What's going on over here? Mute, mute. What am I? Oh, I see. I see. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm sorry. I get it. I pressed the wrong button. There we go. Now everybody's fine. Good. Okay. So, <clears throat> The first Rebbe of Chabad called Rav Shner Zalman. He's the one that wrote the, the book Tatanya. He was put into prison by his, he was, he was anyway, there was uh, slandered by his enemies and he was put into prison and he was there for 53 days. And in that time, he managed to convince all of those that imprisoned him that a tremendous mistake had been made and that he was a very holy person and that he <clears throat> impressed them fantastically. And anyway, so that that's another story, but that, that happened on the, 19th day of Kislev. Also, his son, the second Rebbe of Chabad, was also in prison. This was a bit later. And he got out also in Kislev, the 10th day of Kislev. <clears throat> All right, so, but now we have the Rebbe is talking about, in general, what is the idea of the new month? <clears throat> the new month, the Jewish people, there, they are likened to the moon. <clears throat> and the new moon, that's the head of the year. That's the head of the, the head of the year is the, the, the Rosh Hashanah. And the head of the month, not just the beginning, but the head. And so the Rebbe says, and that's when the Hasidut was revealed. That's the month when the Hasidut Chabad was revealed, when the Rebbe got out of prison. So the Rebbe asked a question. One second. That doesn't. Why? If so, why make this big celebration on the first day of the month? Let's make the celebration in the in the middle of the month when the moon is full. When the moon is full, that's what we're really waiting for: the Jewish people to be full. Right? That's the idea of Mashiach coming, and for everything to be full, the world will be educated. The world, the moon will be like the sun. So the Rebbe says, "Well, the reason is is like this." <clears throat> The main thing of the, the new moon is there's a thing called new, brand new. It's nishadish, it's beginning the light. Open shell nakuda, there's only one little point. <clears throat> so we have to say, therefore, that the future redemption is going to be like the beginning of the moon. <clears throat> the beginning of the redemption is going to be by means of the Mashiach, David Malka Mashiach. Why? It's stressed mostly because there's a new thing in regarding it's, there's, this is something better than it being full. <clears throat> Begula Tida in the future redemption 
by means of David, Malcham Mashiach, that will be revealed this quality of the Jews. Namely what? That they can renew, they can bring a little sliver of light into darkness. Let's see how. You've unpacked them, let's understand this, but Bi or Amayla, what's the big thing about giving birth in general? And especially how it's relevant to the Jewish people. Let's take a baby. <clears throat> a baby right after he's born. Let's compare a baby after he's born, right after he's born. This comes out of the mother's womb in regarding to how it is after he is grown up. <clears throat> Yadua, it's known, Maimur Gadol, the Israel, it's known the greatness, the, the saying of this great person of Israel. Abaya or Rabba, Animit Palel Atinuk. When I pray, I pray like <clears throat> this child. But I pray like this child. <clears throat> what are you thinking when you pray? It was asked. This great genius person. What are you thinking when you pray? So what I'm thinking about when I pray, I'm thinking the same thing as a baby thinks, a young child thinks. <clears throat> Since that a person doesn't know, a child doesn't know anything about these levels, Kabbalistic levels about God, and all the spherot and everything. So his prayer is to the essence of God, without any details. Kafishu Lamaila, like he's above any sort of levels which we can describe. Mahuto so to speak, God's essence. There's a big advantage in a child. Kapishuto. <clears throat> More than a great person. A child himself is greater than a person who wants to pray like a child. <clears throat> what, what, what's the thing of a child? A child prays to God. Why? Because he feels there's God. He feels that there's God. A child feels that it can't be that I'm, I'm, creating, I'm creating myself. A little child, let's say he's two years old, three years old, you know, it's two, three years ago, I wasn't even here. And all of a sudden, I'm here. Here's this whole big world. Right? He knows that it didn't come from itself. A little child, he, fe he feels. He doesn't know it intellectually. If you ask him, how do you know this God? Uh, it, it just obvious. He can't explain it. A person, an older person, could be very impressed by this. Wow, you know, this child, he really believes in God. Look at this purity. Look at this wholesomeness. Right? I never saw such a thing like that. I want to pray like that. And he says, no matter how much you try, you're not going to have the same sincerity as this child. He and she are there because the older person knows and understands something <coughs> about the spirit, about godliness, some aspect of God. So it's certainly slow. So he's, he has to do a job of removing all of these levels and these titles and these names of God and aspects of God so that he can pray a love to God, and not to any of God's <clears throat> aspects. How great God is, how kind God is, how wonderful God is, how severe God is, how infinite God is, how close God is. He doesn't think about any of that. How can I get rid of it? I already I worked so hard to think about these things. <clears throat> it's good to think about those things, but you have to have that sincerity of a child, and you can never really get to it. Why? How can you... You have to, how can you remove it? You have to think, she call the darkness, all these levels and all of these terms. Shemavian, that he understands and he grasps, these are only what we call Torah Shlila. These are, if you want to call it, how do we call it? Um, I don't want to say the word negative, even though I just said it. But, and these are, are uh, how do you say? All right, let's see the word negative. That's not the word. I'll, I'll come to it, what the word is. These are negative terms. Why is it negative? We're calling God is great. God is kind. That's negative. What's negative about that? The dogma. Inyan yochal. We say that God is able. Shenei amar Allah, we say that God, mafshit mimenu, kol mashuhu epecha yecholet. What are we saying? That God is able. God can do anything. And when we say God can do anything, what does it mean? It means we remove from God any possibility of weakness or inability. <clears throat> so it's it's a negative term. When we say God is great, God is wise, 
What do you mean? We're, we're taking away anything from God that might indicate that he's not great. But what God's greatness is, we don't know. <clears throat> we're mafshi, we're removing from God anything which is the opposite of wisdom. We say God is wise, means there's nothing we can say about God <clears throat> that can indicate that he's not wise. Either there's things that happen in the world that don't seem to be good. That's part of God's wisdom. We don't understand it. But what we're saying is God is wise. We're not talking about what God is. We're talking about what God is not. When we say that God is wise, it means that we're negating anything that's the opposite of wisdom. But what God is, we have no idea. <laughs> so is so a person, if he wants to pray like a child, so he has to remove every level from higher to higher on until until finally he realizes that he doesn't know anything. The ultimate knowledge is we don't know. <clears throat> that this he finally reaches the conclusion that's not relevant at all to know what God's essence is only aspects of God and since that he reaches to this by means of this what do you say negative call it dark, by negating all the other levels which are below hurry so excuse me when is intention is for the essence of God, which is above any sort of levels, so we can feel then you feel the amazingness and the incomprehensible, how do you say, wonder, the low ode, the feeling that you have of how high God is, you're feeling that God is nothing like what you could possibly imagine. That's what a person would do, which is not the case of a child. A child, since he doesn't understand all these levels of God, so he doesn't, he doesn't have to negate anything. And Kavana, so when he prays to God, he's praying to God himself. She'enu bedar getter, he's not a nature of a level. <clears throat> all we can say is the essence of God. That's all we can say. But until she'enu korol kodesh he doesn't call by God. He doesn't even call God by the name of God's essence. I am praying to the essence. <clears throat> what does he just says? That's why we call God Hashem, the name. And there was the name means that there's no name, particular name, that you can use to in any way describe God, because any description, that's just aspects of God. <laughs> we can say is God is the name. Also, according to Yiddish, they said the Eberster. Eberster, <clears throat> Yiddish is a English is a Germanic language, so it's not that different from German. The Eberster means the upper one. Eber means to be over. Over. The over one. The, the overmost, when I said. Not the one, I'm sorry. The overmost. Eberster means the highest. What does it mean? Elion, the highest. It doesn't mean that the child, that when his God calls, when a child calls God the Eberster, he doesn't mean to say the, the, the highness of God, how wondrous God is. <clears throat> but we just want to say that God is above. What does it mean? Whatever level you want to say, God is above that level. A child might say, God is above me. That, by the way, incidentally, which the Rebbe is not saying that here, but and then, so that's the whole idea of wearing a kippah, right? You wear a yarmulke. Why do, why do Jews put a, a yarmulke, a kippah on their head? Why do they have a kippah on their head? What's for? So it's because of, the word yarmulke in Yiddish is yire malka, the fear of the king. Uh, uh, this reminds us, my mind, my intelligence goes up to here. And God is above my intelligence. He's above my comprehension. That's called the fear of God. We realize that no matter how great we think we are or how great we think God is, God is above that. It's awesome. Says so that's what a child feels automatically. A child feels automatically. A Jewish child feels automatically. <clears throat> That's what it means to Eberster, that God is above. The child doesn't mean to say that God is talking about that he is, God is, my idea of God is very high. It's much above, you know, infinity. But he wants to say that all he knows is that God is above. Beside this, that God is 
above, he doesn't know anything about God. All he knows is that what is God? God is above. Anything you can say about God, God is above that. Key because if we say that God has some sort of an existence, it's impossible to say that God is in existence. God is a thing, or God is a, 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 a real, that God exists, like we said before. God doesn't really exist. God creates all existence. Anything that there is, <clears throat> God creates it. So God is incomprehensible. That's a stupid thing to say, that God is incomprehensible. As though, you know, you might think you can comprehend him. He's in the world, right? The, the, the Alter Rebbe says in the, in the Tanya, says it's like <clears throat> trying to grasp ideas with your hands, right? You can't grasp ideas with your hands, but you try. That's ridiculous. Bring a big bag, try to grasp mathematics with a bag, right? That's that's stupid. Okay, so I, a, a bigger bag, okay, a, a bag that's the, an elastic bag. I don't get big. It's, it, it makes no sense. A bag is not the proper receptacle as ideas are. It's not in the same world. The same thing, our intellect, even the intellect of the angels, is not in the same category, if you want to call it, as God. God is the creator, and these everything else is just creations. We can't understand that we're being created. A child feels it though. Kevin Shagam, but Tevas Elu, even if no matter what you want to say that God is a thing, God is a this, it, it, this limits God in some way. Ragmi Panesha Mukrachim, we just have to use some sort of a word because you want to talk about God. You're praying to God. What are you going to pray? I'm, I'm praying to who are you praying to? Hello, who are you praying to? Say something. It's in, incomprehensible. Oh. That's so, say, I'm praying to the incomprehensible one. He says, no, 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 that's not, that's not a proper term for God. Incomprehensible means you might think that you can comprehend him, and he's the world of comprehension, but he's not. So what is God? So you have to say something. So therefore, you use some sort of a word that he exists, the first existence. Or you can, the Alter Rebbe uses the, the word, the illuminator. He isn't revealed. Therefore, you can even say that that we can, a child knows that there's a God that exists, that he exists, there is such a thing. But the fact of the matter is God's existence is not really any sort of an existence, but the child feels it. Why does the child feel it? Because he's got a godly soul. And the godly soul feels something which is impossible to understand, impossible to feel, but he feels it. Okay, it's something like in the Holy Temple. In the Holy Temple, in the Holy of Holies, God was revealed. Well, how could God be revealed in a, in a room? That makes no sense. This is, that's right. That's the, that's the answer. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. God is not a person. He's not a thing. How can he be revealed in one place? How can he do it? Right? That's, that's, it's incomprehensible. It's not, not only is that, you're right, it's incomprehensible, but that's the essence of God. That's what's revealed there. Not just any level of God. Higher than all the spiritual worlds. It says, lo, lo, what does it say? And no, no one will be with the high priest when he goes in. No one, not even the angels, won't be there. Well, Katotsam is in from this, here's the difference between them, between a child and an older person. Also, the person that's connecting to God by an older person, a mature person that he knows and he understands the greatness of God. He's a tremendous Kabbalist, right? By means of negating all of the other limit levels which are below. His attachment to God is, in a way, of hafshatash lilas. The main thing he's occupied in is removing all the ideas and the <clears throat> the the how do you say the the levels that of God that he's become aware aware of, <clears throat> namely negating his understanding. Even the level of feeling God, you're willing to devote your life, you're willing to give your life for God. Bittel Matthias. It says he removes every sort of idea of what God is, even the ideas of God that's worth giving your life for, he gives, gives that away also. And then he gives his life. Right? It's very common that people give their lives in war, right? They make this, this religion makes a war against this religion, and people are willing to burn, die, burn on the stake, right, for their religion or for their cause, right? Give me liberty or give me death. You know, people are willing to die for a certain thing. <clears throat> certain thing. Okay, that's also another option in life, to give your life for a cause. 
to devote your life for a cause. You know, you work with the lepers or you work with the people, even though he knows he's going to get sick. And, it, <clears throat> and so he's giving his life for a cause. But there he's giving his life because he wants something. He's he got some something is there that he's 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 giving his life for. When a Jew gives his life, it's not that he's giving his life for God. It's just impossible for him to go against the creator. There's no logic. He doesn't want to give his life. He would like to live. But it's just impossible for him to go and deny the creator. It's impossible for him. He's not doing it in order to get into heaven or in order to, 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 to make an example of himself, whatever it is. All those reasons he might be able to get out of somehow or other, right? <clears throat> the famous story was in, is told in, <clears throat> in the Gomorrah and Shabbos that uh, the king, who was the king over there? Antiochus, I think, that he had Hannah and her seven children. <clears throat> and he wanted them, he said, bow down to me or I'll kill you. And the last one, he said, listen, I'll throw my ring on the ground. You just bend down to pick up my ring. Make it look like you're going to, if not, I'll kill you. You just saw I just killed all your brothers. Come on, you don't want to die. Just pick up the ring. And he said, I'm not going to even bow down, not even make, a, that even someone should think that I'm bowing down to you as a God. I'm not going to do it. Why not? Why? You want to know why? There is no why. He just couldn't do it. He says he's giving his life for something that's totally not understandable. But, and even if, if he has all these reasons, he, in order to really truly, he removes all the reasons, because all the reasons, you can find Jews are clever people, you understand? You can find a loophole over there. Right? right? Say, listen, I was temporary and sad. Listen, even more, I'll tell you this, says that if a, if, if a Jew, let's say, is forced to worship an idol, right? The, the church was really big at this, you know, but the change religion will let you live. Bow down to the cross and you'll live. So it says that, if, God forbid, if a Jew does that, then he's not punished. Why? Because he was under duress. A person that does a sin under duress, so he's not of his right mind. You can't punish a person like that. And the Jews knew that. And nevertheless, they said, burn me. Shema Yisrael. I'm not going to bow down to an idol. What's the big deal? Bow down. It's such a big thing. You're like, he threw his ring down. Bend down to pick up the ring. You're not even bowing. You're thinking in your mind, right? I'm not bowing down. I'm just picking up a ring. I am not bowing down. I hate the religion. I hate the church. I hate this thing. There are a bunch of liars. It's idolatry. I'm not bowing down. I'm just saving my life, right? A Jew can't do it. A lot of Jews did do it because they went into the realm of logic. But as soon as they got the realm of God, which is above logic, <clears throat> which is not the case, a child, or the illuminator, God, the essence of God is revealed. And this little child, that's like the birth of the new moon. That's the essence of a Jew. This total devotion to God above any sort of comprehension. And that's why he comprehends God and learns about God and loves God and does the commandments. He does it all because it's a commandment of God and God is about comprehension. That's what we're going to learn about Rivka. We're going to learn. This is above any understanding. Okay, listen, you know, you talk about this stuff. To actually do it is a whole other story, but <clears throat> it's there. It's present for every Jew. This knowledge is not by a child. <clears throat> the child doesn't know that there's God. Doesn't know understanding. This is his whole being. It's not a separate thing for him that he knows this. How he eats, how he sleeps, etc. Of course, there are children that don't exhibit this. Of course, there are. But the children that do, the reason they do is because... And of course, there's also children that just do what their parents tell them to do. But the Rebbe says, nevertheless, of course, there are all these things. But, you know, you can, how do you say, minimize everything, right? reduce, reductionize. Can reduce everything, right? There's no such thing as genuine love. People don't love their parents. They're just afraid. He loves his mother for sexual reasons. All of this, you can you can minimize everything. You explain away everything. But the Rebbe is trying to say there is such a thing as genuine, and that's what we're dealing with here, and that's what the Mashiach wants to bring into the world: genuineness, genuine, genuine love, genuine 
<clears throat> honesty, genuine serving God, not thinking about going to heaven, not being afraid of going to hell. That is not at all the motivation. Motivation is just to be true, genuine, like a little child. He doesn't know any of the tricks. He knows only the one thing, God exists. God, he doesn't understand any of the ideas that I've just said, but he feels it, he knows it. And that's like the new moon. And that's the essence of Judaism. That's like Abraham. Or how Torah Hasidah says, it's a good to be Israel by a great person, a genius is revealed his attachment to God, mainly because of all the revelations of God, not because of the essence of God and not because of the essence of his soul. His attachment to God is according to his understanding and his right uh, his level of attachment to God. Above this, he has a will to serve God. He has a pleasure to serve God until he is attached to God by means of the yechida, the inner aspect of the five aspects of the soul, nefesh, ruch, neshama, chai, and yechida. His yechida is attached to God. That after all this, nevertheless, these are all five names of God. Names of the soul. A name shows, even this name of Yechida, totally united with God's unity. All he wants to do is be united with God. That's what a big tzaddik can do. But there's a higher level than that. What's that? A child. A child, his attachment to God is not because of the level of Yechida of his soul. Not because of this inner level of the soul, which brings even to self-sacrifice. He's attached from the essence of his soul, above any name, above all these five names of God. It's a portion of God from above, mamash, inside of every Jew. That's the essence, and that's what's revealed in the beginning of the month. And that's what we're talking about, God willing, tomorrow. Amazing, powerful stuff the Rebbe is talking about here, what a Jew is, what reality is, what reality is. And especially what Mashiach is going to reveal, that's why it says the coming of the Mashiach is like the new moon. It's like this point of truth that's going to be revealed in everything. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Let's do the ha yom yom. Here we go. <clears throat> the concept, and listen, and we were just talking about before, and just to that. The, 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 the inner point of godliness, which is found <clears throat> in the inner essence of a child, is found in everything. The, the same God that's creating, you know, a Jewish child in his essence is creating a rock or a cat or a, you know, a, a tree. God is creating everything. This inner point <clears throat> of the essence of God is revealed ideally in everything if it's used for God, if it's used the way that God wants it. That's what the Torah is for. So we're talking about your business and your family and your car and your, your motorcycle and your, your, your whatever it is, your, your hockey stick, any, everything that you've got, right? everything you are, everything you have, if it's used according, if it can be used according to the Torah. <clears throat> then it, it can be holy, of course, not to fool yourself. Okay, not to fool yourself. The concept, let's go. Now we're doing the Yom Yom. <clears throat> Excuse me, sayings of the previous Rebbe, which were gathered together by the Last Rabbi, by the way. The concept of divine providence, Hashkacha Pratis, it means like this. Okay, what does divine providence mean? That God directs everything. Everything there is in the world, God directs. God makes everything happen. It's all guided by God's direction. Okay, this in no way minimizes our free choice. How that works out, we'll talk about later, but nevertheless, take it for granted. That's what. So, what does it mean that God directs everything? Not only is every particular movement of the various creatures directed by providence, where every cat goes, where every leaf falls, where every rock you know, tumbles, not only is the providence, is the life force which is inside of everything, we can say, oh, God directs everything. No, God, even more, God enlivens everything. Huh? It says it's even more than that. The particular movement of any creation, of every creature, creation, right? Where every ant goes, where every you know uh, leaf falls, where every wind blows, every what is it wave on the sea, 
everything is not only is it directed by God and enlivened by God, but it has an interrelation to everything else in the creation. It's related to the grand design of the entire creation. The aggregate, and there is all of the individual acts in the world, every amoeba's movements and every wind that blows and every, right, whatever it is, is some sort of weird uh, fish down 20, 20 leagues under the ocean or something like that, is everything is part of the design, God's design in the mystery of the whole entire creation. We're not only talking about now. Ponder, think about it. The swaying of a blade of grass is brought about by God himself. And this is crucial to the fulfillment of the purpose of the whole of the creator and the purpose of the creation. If so, how much more so if we're talking about a human being, what a human being does, and how much more so regarding every single Jew? If so, every this is that it was revealed. I'm, I'm not a physicist and I don't know much about physics, but there's this thing about the what is it, the butterfly effect, that it could be the one little movement in some forest or something like that in, in the Amazon jungle <clears throat> can have an effect on something else and it'll affect on something else and it'll tumble the whole entire, you know, like these dominoes until finally it'll affect the whole entire world and the sun will reverse its, its path. And who knows what? One little good deed can have a chain effect that affects the whole entire world. Pretty deep. Why is this whole thing? Because it's coming to tell you how important this physical world is to God. Infinitely more important than all the spiritual worlds. Infinitely more mysterious. Infinitely more exciting. Huh? So why, why to go? everybody's wanting to go to the world to come? And let's appreciate the godliness in this physical world and make more of it with Mashiach now. Have a good day. God willing, three o'clock, there's going to be a class in Chomash. Anyone who wants to come, you're welcome.